Is. Is. Eh. What's up, fucks? Want to make your helix sound huge? Well, come on over to the helix jam, fuckers. <laughs> How's it going, guys and girls? Uh, welcome back. It's been a bit of a strange couple of days uh, all over the world. Uh, and we're not allowed to talk about that thing that rhymes with Sharona Cyrus. No, sorry. All right, so uh, this video is to... Uh, it's kind of a quick tips and tricks thing about making your patches a little bit bigger in the sense of making them sound bigger so there's like a couple of little things that i do and uh, a few other people that i know uh, on youtube that kind of sometimes employ the same tips and depending on what amp they're using so let's go through these as kind of quick as possible i am using right now the full helix floor this hopefully if we get this right over this set of blocks um we'll be able to go into hx stomp as well so it you know get comfortable because there's a few things to take in so let us begin uh first of all i've picked an amp okay there's no cap i've just picked an amp all right i'm kind of using the soldano all of the time now it just i don't know i just keep going back to it, it doesn't matter what appears in the helix i always end up going straight back to the soldano so now next to that i'm going to pick a cab which is kind of like tip one if you like um i always tend to go for the greenback 25 so this is just completely stock <laughs> So the first tip will be pick the right mic, depending on what guitar you're using as well. Uh, right now I'm using an Ibanez Gem with the Demarzios. So if I play that A chord and kind of just flick through uh, a couple of the mics. And they all give different sort of distorted characteristics, you know, because it just picks up the sound different. So. And a lot of people kind of swear by the ribbons. I'm not a massive fan. I mean, it warms it up a little bit and takes that fizz off, but I'm a kind of fan of the fizz. Johnny Lee 2020, fan of the fizz. You see what I mean? So just for this, we're going to stick with uh, the 57. We could probably tune up a little bit in a minute, but all right. So, in between the amp and cab, uh, we are going to drop something in there which is going to kind of wake this cab up a little bit. So, what we'll do is we'll go into distortion, go into kinky boost, turn off the drive, turn the boost on, turn the bright on. We will turn that off, and here it is without it on. And this is it with it on. Hear that? Instantly it comes alive, you know what I mean? Uh, not just with volume as well, there's, there's a little something else going on. So that's off. And that's on. So if we're sticking with HX uh, Stomp, you want to be able to put that in HX Stomp. I'm going to leave these three on here. Uh, second thing that you can do, if we just turn that off for a minute. The second thing that we can do is you can take our normal reverb, which will, in this case, be the plate. I always use the plate. Kind of roll the decay down to about five and a half. Pull back the pre-delay. And we'll leave the mix where it is for now. Just take a listen to this. So again, it kind of picks it up. All right, so this is it without. You get that on and off. 
a lot of people are kind of afraid of reverb in the sense of, not afraid but uh, reluctant to use it because they I like the the room ambience man i like to the room to do the reverb for me but that sounds big already So let's put the kinky boost on as well. And then we'll turn them off. Kinky boost on. Plate reverb. Uh, there is a lot of reverb there, so I'll just pull that back. But again, it's called into taste. So we're at four blocks. So uh, it's it's not a difficult thing to do. So this now, uh, we're going to put a delay. So I do like a stereo delay. If you're listening in stereo in your headphones, you'll feel the benefit of this all of the time. So as far as um, time settings go, I tend to leave a delay on all of the time between 4.20 and 5.20, but for the sake of this, we will look at, uh, we'll put it at 520 milliseconds, and we will turn the mix down to about 25, and we'll put the trails on. I'm a trails kind of guy. We'll turn it off, and then we'll turn it back. You hear that? So obviously some people now will kind of be thinking, well, I kind of like a, a Minotaur or I want a tube screaming in the front. You can. I mean, realistically, you could probably sacrifice one of these, you know what I mean? If um, if you're not a massive fan of reverb or you're not a massive fan of delay, then obviously you're going to gain in that aspect. But for me, the Soldano, if I turn the drive up, you know, a lot, that will then give you you know, all, all of the, the gain that you need. So while we are sitting within the amp, let's just pull that drive down a little bit. Uh, one of the other things that I I do as well is we'll boost the mids, obviously, because if we turn the mids off, it gets mushy in the mix if you're going out live, and you know sound engineers do not like that shit one bit. So I would take the mids kind of out, you know, because that's the. In a live setting, we all know that mids are your friends. So I'll kind of push the mids a little bit. Uh, and then we will take a look at the treble and the presence. So where the treble is concerned, people will kind of think that you've got to push the treble to, you know, be heard. Well, I've cut all the mids, so I'll push out the treble. Kind of doesn't really work like that. And I found that if I actually lower the treble and up the presence, uh, kind of a la Paul Gilbert, um, it gives a, a better result for me. So we'll take all that treble off. It goes a bit woolly and a bit mushy. And then I'll up the presence. Let's just turn that delay off a little bit just so you can hear what's going on. kicking in so that's probably about where I need to be and then with the presence I'll go like above the treble <laughs> kind of like that you hear it so that's off
okay? So there's like a, a couple of the, the normal tips um, that I will do. And it's sometimes it's all of them and sometimes it's not depending on uh, what guitar I'm using because that's obviously vitally important because the amount of times that you will make a, a preset and someone will go, it sounds nothing like what you fucking played on the internet, man. Um, so the final one that I'm going to give you is, you will have seen this before because I tend to do it all of the time. I'm a, you know, I'm a guy of consistency. Uh, in the reverb section in the legacy, uh, take the tile reverb. All right. And let's just make sure the delay's off. And I'll turn that verb off just so you can hear what's going on. So hear that? Hear that? That's off. That's on. It's not really reverby, and obviously there's room for you know adjustments. We should probably put a noise gate on here. That yeah, we'll do that in a minute. There's room for adjustments within the high cut because if you cut down, uh, do a high cut on your your delays and on your reverbs, it kind of smooths things out a little bit. But for the sake of speed and and you know getting you to see this, so I'll turn the pre delay off just so it's on all the time. <laughs> kind of run it down to about 40 percent and you can't use too much of it because what happens is is that it, it, it completely squashes the tone out if you watch hear that makes everything kind of disappear it's in the room next door all right so anywhere between sort of 30 and 40 percent is kind of the golden area i tend to leave the decay at around about five <laughs> And we'll pop everything else back on. And there we go. So it sounds kind of huge in a, a studio setting. I mean, that is a lot of delay. It is a lot of delay, but I, I'm a all about a delay kind of guy. And that's pretty much it. So as a recap, uh, pick your amp, um, roll down the treble a little bit, turn up the presence a little bit, boost the mids a little bit, then in between the cab, you're going to put the kinky boost on, turn the drive off, turn the boost on and the bright on. Then you'll take your cab and then pick the right mic because depending on what guitar you're using, this bit is kind of the most important thing um because i could i could plug a les paul in now and this would sound you know like a bag of dicks um so make sure that you get this bit right okay with the high cuts and everything we haven't done that you know we haven't fine tweaked it if you look at um most other people when they do youtube video everything is like perfectly tweaked within an inch of its life and you can still do that with this um there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you a bad person. And then after that, I tend to use the plate reverb. Why? Because it just, to me, sounds bigger. Again, it's just my personal ear preference. Uh, I like a stereo delay. Uh, anywhere between 420 and 520. I mean, 520 is quite an obscene amount. Um, and then after that, I just throw the tile reverb on the end. Now, you could, in theory, then, if you wanted, I mean, we're at six blocks and obviously HX Stomp in the upcoming uh, updates is going to move to eight blocks, so this this won't be a problem. But for now, you could sacrifice the reverb for uh, the tile reverb on the end for the EQ, okay? And again, that's kind of a take your pick, you know what I mean? Take a parametric, take the tilt, uh, or take the simple EQ, and kind of just play around with that if you don't like the sound of the tile reverb, all right? Uh, so that's it just a quick tips i hope everybody's doing okay if you're sitting in isolation because of the my Cyrus that we can't talk about um 
so yeah have a good day uh let me know what you think dial in this patch and uh yeah come back and tell me how it worked out for you take it easy <laughs>